Hello guys, it's Sharif here with Engadget, and I'm joined by Walter De Brewer. You've just been live on stage here at Engadget Expand, and now we've got you backstage to ask a few more questions. Um, and I guess the key question is, you've been involved in so many different kinds of projects, one laptop a child, propulsion, physics, time travel. What is it that you're putting your energy into now? So now, um, so to uh, you know, we are making a, uh, a medical device for consumers, mm -hmm. and it's uh, you know reminiscent of uh, what my generation saw in Star Trek, you know, the tricorder, because basically it's uh, uh, um, so it's not a prop, it's not a toy, it's a real medical device that goes through FDA, and uh, because I I believe that consumers really need an instrument, and and the last thing that healthcare really excited me was just like so many other people was in Star Trek. Sure. Yeah. If, if people haven't seen, this is the Scout, is the new product yes. from Scanner yes. do. If yeah. they haven't seen, just a quick explanation of yes. how it works. So the Scout, uh, so it's a very small device, which you actually, you can uh, put to your temple or you can do it to somebody else. And it's with Bluetooth, it's connected to your uh, um, uh, smartphone. And it gives you, uh, so in 10 seconds, uh, your all your vital signs same vital signs that are checked in uh, emergency rooms all over the world. And so we're also making uh, uh, paddles which give you a complete urine analysis. You know, just by using the, uh, the app, it uh, gives you that in under one minute. And so we are also now working on saliva analysis. So in the end, we want to put more and more of the diagnostic experience of a hospital into the consumer's hands so that they can do something with it because, you know, the crowd and computers, nobody can beat that. So these are Bluetooth Bluetooth 4 accessories? Yes. Um, and they communicate with a smartphone, you've got apps. Yes. In the world. So what's the status of the project in terms of being a product that we could yeah. buy? Yes, well, uh, the, the prototype is, uh, is, is there. So now we are going through FDA. Uh, so uh, that uh, submission uh, process is uh, going along. Um, so, and we foresee for our uh, two products, actually also the urine analysis, to be ready for, uh, before the end of the year. So, so before uh, the end of this year, for, yeah. for the main product, the Scout, and also for the yes, accessories. Yes, yeah. And that's including all the, the, the FDA um, bureaucracy uh, that you have Well, to go uh, depending on, uh, you never know how, how governments react, of course. Yeah. But uh, so depending on our expectations and how we you know, fulfilled all the, the steps. That's uh, what we are targeting. You've mentioned that even until quite recently, you weren't planning on going down the FDA route. And then you didn't really want the government to be involved in this product. Yeah. What changed your mind? So uh, I think that, uh, so when I say that, you know, the people and the crowd, they need uh, 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 an instrument where they can actually monitor their own health. At the same time, they're also entitled to to know that these measurements are accurate because you know at the same you know, we are talking about people's lives so this is not not a game so that's why i decided to be peer reviewed actually and to go through all the 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 government uh, qualifications that are needed even for uh, you know for pharma for any device company because uh the consumers are entitled to to have good knowledge about their health so. So the FDA um, is a way for you, to, working with them is a way for you to prove that the data you're collecting yes. is, is reliable. Yes, not only that, but I, because uh, our vision is that a consumer can sit next to his doctor and they can both look at the same data. If I go FDA, the doctor can look at it because then, you know, a, uh, this is FDA approved and it becomes a sort of a Goldilocks device where you can talk intelligently with your doctor what do you think and what should i do and uh, otherwise it you know you are counting steps or you know counting calories and your doctor does something else and your records are there and that you know that's you know i would like to have a completely new experience for that um if we just take a step back and look at the product so i'm going to hold um the scout to my temple for 10 yeah. seconds yeah what will it measure so it will measure your uh, heart rate your uh, temperature, uh, your SpO2, your oxygenation of, of in your blood. It will, uh, with an algorithm, it will measure your uh, respiratory rate, uh, which is not actually that important. You can also actually just count it yourself. And it will give you a, a pulse wave transit time, which is a, 
uh, a number that tells you if you should check your blood pressure or not. So, because consumers are actually very interested in trending, you know, how, how their health, uh, um, you know, what they should do, give me alerts. Uh. So you could potentially get an alert there, but do you, when you talk to doctors about all of this data that your device, the Scout, is able to collect, how do they react? Do they kind of get defensive or are they encouraging? Uh, well, so as we, you know, with, with all the uh, novel data uh, that we are introducing in the market, you know, hundreds of companies like ours, so nobody really knows how uh, this will all work out. But I, I, I'm very, you know, optimistic about this because, and most doctors are actually, and it's true that there will be a lot of data but it, there will also be a lot of need for information analysts in, in, in doctors. And doctors are not accountants, you know. We should, you know, like, uh, they should do what they're really trained for. That is, give us our, their point of view in this data about ourselves. And I believe nurses and doctors will be, um, you, know, are, you know, I count on it that they will be on our side with that, this new, um, this complete new revolution of consumer medicine. So it's a revolution, but it's not a revolution that will replace the doctor. You're saying that I'm not going to trust an app to di yeah. and some algorithms to yeah. diagnose problems with me. I still am going to trust a doctor to do that. The difference is with where the information is coming from and the, I guess the quantity of information. Is that yes, right? Uh, yes, and also I think uh, the difference is also that I will be more educated. It's like, uh, for instance, when you are in 23andMe, a member of 23andMe, for instance, I've been, you know, doing that for a couple of years. Well, now I quite know a lot about, well, I quite know a bit about genetic. Before that, I didn't know anything. So now at least I know, uh, you know, like uh, my carriers, what, uh, you know, uh, and I, I hope that people would be upgrading their knowledge about their own health towards their doctors and that their doctors actually feel a bit more relaxed that they can treat us not like children but like adults to talk about our health. So implicit in that, do you think that there is an element of patients being treated like children today? Do you, have you felt that in your contacts with uh, Well, I think, I think it's a bit the other way around that patients they want to be treated like children. Like, I don't want to know, you know, don't give me too much explanation. Uh, I'll just do it, give me a pill. You know, right. the, so where are the adults, you know, would, would actually be a learning machine and how can I correct this or how, how can I be better in this and, and what shouldn't I do? I think that's more the... Uh, and, uh, yeah, if you are a child, you are treated like a child, of course. So given there is this reticence perhaps amongst your potential customers if they just want the pill the, the, the remedy are they going to really hold something up against their temples for 10 seconds if at the moment they're just getting clean simple answers from their oh doctor? yes how are you going to capitalize on that? Uh, well the uh, this is the the main thing actually because you see everyone in the world wants to know if their meds really work and this is your vital signs will tell you that. They give a ripple effect in your vital signs. So the power of knowing that this pill is better than that pill, that will be you know, a big change. Um, let's um, look at your whole career, because I'm interested in, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you've, you've done so many different things. So how did you end up with, um, with Scanadu and with, with, with this uh, medical sensing? How did you get to this field? Yeah, uh, well, actually, really by accident in 2005 uh, so my youngest uh, child fell out of uh, the window and uh, had a, se had a, se a severe uh, uh, brain trauma so and I found myself actually with my wife a year in hospital first in ICU then you know emergency I went through all uh, so and you know you sit there 24-7 uh, so the first week you are in shock the second week you start to log everything the third week you break through their firewall you know, and then you know the fourth week you can run the hospital and uh, so but knowing this and being able to uh, uh, give guidance also to other parents who were there and how they should do it that's that gave me you know I thought like there must be something like that so when this happens that we have an instrument that we know for ourselves and that we can compare to hospitals and to our, our, our caregivers and our doctors. And for the moment, we don't have it. We only have a thermometer. 
do you envisage a future in which these sensing devices will be as prevalent as thermometers that people use at home on their kids? Will it ever be as affordable? Uh, we're looking at $150 for the, for the yeah. Scout. Um, will the price change? Will it, will it come down? And will the size of the device change? You know, how do you see it? How will you m manage to make people really interested in, in this, you know, and make it really mainstream? So that's, uh, well, hard questions because, well, we, so it, it, it is certainly the adoption of all these devices are going more rapidly than we thought. And, uh, but it is true that now devices will only measure one thing. Probably they will not be products in the, in the future, but features into other devices. Because, and because of that, the price of these devices will go down dramatically. So um, if you now see that some uh, you know, uh, infrared thermometers uh, already cost uh, you know, uh, $50 to $100, so getting these devices down to a more affordable level will not be a problem, I think. Also, they will get, be getting cheaper and, uh, and, and, and smaller and thinner, like, like everything. Uh, and uh, so very soon they will probably be built into phones. The first health phone will probably be a big market. And then if phones persist, you know, if we are, they are not replaced by other devices like uh, Google Glass or, uh, or uh, you know, like, uh, like, like iPads, or then, you know, um, they will be in the phone, but very soon I think they will be in our body. Is that something you're working on, a health phone? Oh, no, no. Okay, no, so we, we don't have the resources to, to make a phone. Uh, there's only a couple of partners in the world who can do that. You've mentioned before something which I find really intriguing, which is the idea of implantable. You know, if you're going to go really small yeah. and sort of really uh, invisible, you could actually implant these sensors in, our, in us. Yeah. I mean, potentially in our temple, if that's where it yeah. needs to be. Is that realistic, and how long? I think it's uh, it's realistic, and uh, it all depends on how uh, how quickly they can go through uh, FDA. Because if you just look at the uh, uh, the installed base of uh, of stents, for instance, in baby boomers now, we're talking about millions and millions, and none of them can communicate with their stent. You know, they cannot see if the stent is okay, or you know, if they don't going to get a stroke, or and that's just a pity because it would be pretty easy to make this you know a data capturing device and I think a lot of that are now going for FDA or are in FDA and um, I think in the next uh, um, I think in the next three to five years um, this will you know will have a you know more comfortable ICs in our body I think when something happens to us so three to five years for implanting technology so, yes but then on a surgical level, you know, like when they put stents in or, or uh, uh, intracranial pressure, uh, many groups are working on that now. Um, do you mind if we look at some of the other stuff you've done in your, your career? How, you've got, if you, you've, you've been a semiotician um, at, at the academic yeah. level. And I'd love to ask what that what that is, yeah. you know, and how you would explain it, because yeah. it's kind of tricky to understand. Yeah, yeah. And you've done many other things. So, are those projects you finished with now, and it's all Scanadu, or are you still involved in other projects? Uh, no, for the moment, I only do Scanadu, uh, and uh, because this is already a very a very big project. Yeah. So, semiotics is like uh, you know what uh, what how shall I put it? What DNA is for biology? Actually, semiotics is for language. It's the layer on the language. You know, we all, you know, like uh, English is a language French. Why is a why is a, a chair, a chaise in French? And you know, how did these, you know, how did these semiotic systems come about? So it was a very comfortable, and I I loved uh, Umberto Eco and Jacques Derrida. It's between, uh, you know, it's between mathematics, lingu linguistics, and philosophy. It's a very comfortable area of uh, academics. Uh, I find it intriguing. I just yeah. want to know, so what kind of problem would you tackle in semiotics? Well, for what? instance, uh, um, so for instance, uh, so uh, one of my, my, my research was on making parsers so that you could actually make any uh, text subversive. So, although it may be true, you could actually argue that it is not by some very simple, actually, uh, technologies on how to use language. 
And, uh, but also, semiotics is also involved with parsers, you know, uh, how to parse natural language, uh, natural language processing, uh, 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 voice recognition. Um, you know, we were all, uh, uh, you know, Lisp uh, uh, people, uh, you know, 20 years ago. So we believed in artificial intelligence and we believed that we could teach the machine language and when that didn't work we taught you know biological systems how to use machines so is but is it still a live area of study does it still i mean does it contribute to what we know as um, sort of natural language recognition voice recognition yes a lot of that has gone into uh, what we are now actually using in uh, voice recognition and auto dictation and uh, right yeah there's one other project i have to ask about um, which is i mean there was a while where you did sort of real blue skies research and that included time travel. Yeah. I mean, how? how you know? And did you uh, get anywhere? So, uh, well, first of all, so uh, so this was in our big lab where only two people worked on two of the 111 worked on time travel. But it was one of um, so you see, time travel is actually completely mathematics. So it's all about mathematics. It's not about being a device, or it's a lot of physics and mathematics and new mathematics. And in the end. You know, of the evening, you are, uh, you know, you're not there where you want to go, and uh, there's all sorts of, uh, and certainly, you know, time travel is something that, you know, you know, it intrigues us all because well, uh, basically the, the the devices that we are now making, the medical device that we are now making, will be travel time travel machines because in 2015 you will be able to look at 2013 and see how you felt, and you know, so in the end. But the, the time travel machines are there, they're just... See, that's what I'm getting at, because I yeah. want an answer here. So I, I'm inclined to trust your physics, since yeah. you've worked on, like, you've been connected with propulsion systems for NASA, so I, I reckon you know your stuff. I mean, so is it possible, time travel? I'm looking for uh, some well, hope here. I'll tell you last week. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, okay, and I'll be listening last week, too. Yeah, yeah. I look forward to it. Yeah. Uh, Thank you, everybody, for watching this. Um, it's a busy day here at Engadget Expand, and there'll be lots more going on tomorrow. So please check out the live, live streams on the website. That's it. Thank you for watching.